We begin with the R key. This will bring up the recent documents tab on the welcome dialog. The home tab will allow me to create a new part document. The Q key will temporarily show my standard planes. I left click the front plane and from the context toolbar, I can create a new sketch. Holding down the right mouse button and dragging will reveal the mouse gestures menu. Here I can select four sketching tools. Mouse gestures can be customized by right clicking the command manager and selecting customize. We can increase or decrease the amount of gestures available and customize the commands available depending on whether we are working in PAR, sketch, assembly, or drawing environments. Simply drag a command from the list to your gesture wheel. I'll use my mouse gestures to select the line tool. From the right mouse button menu, I can select the option sketch numeric input. This will allow me to type in the length of the line as I'm sketching. I'll then right click and turn that option off. The S key brings up your context sensitive shortcut menu. This again can be customized by right clicking the menu and selecting customize. Similar to before, we can drag and drop commands onto our shortcut menu. I select the circle tool and start sketching. There is a grid in the background that we can't see, but we can snap to. We can snap to it by holding the shift key on a keyboard while we're sketching. As you can see, we snap to increments of 25 millimeters. We can customize the grid spacing from our options. We use the option search to search for grid. Double the number of snap points every 100 millimeters. This should allow us to snap to increments of 12 and a half millimeters. We'll complete our two circles, one at 12 and a half rad and the other at 25 rad. I'll then use the S key to select my line tool and start sketching lines to connect the two circles. I should be able to use my inference lines to snap tangent to the circles and create a closed profile. Rather than adding additional dimensions to the sketch to fully define it, I'm gonna right click and select fully defined sketch. This allows me to fully define my sketch as per the settings within the property manager. The D key will bring confirmation corner next to my cursor where I can confirm my selection. Shader sketch contours allow me to visualize the contours that I've created within this multi-contour sketch. Where we have contours overlapping, we see the shaded sketch becomes darker in that region. Again, I'll use the D key to bring confirmation corner next to my cursor, which will allow me to exit out of my sketch. I want to use Instant 3D to extrude a contour from within my sketch. In order for me to tell SOLIDWORKS which contour to select, I need to right click and select the contour select tool from the right mouse button menu. I can then select just the outer edge of the circle that I'm looking to extrude. I can snap to the increments of the ruler by hovering my cursor over the ruler. For reference, Instant 3D can be toggled on and off from the features menu. I can reuse that same sketch again by going to the feature tree and showing the sketch. I'll use my contour select tool again to select different areas within the sketch and drag those out in the opposite direction. Again, snap into the ruler. I'm finished with the sketch, so I'll hide it from the right mouse button menu. If you ever struggle to rotate the model, there are two options available. Here I'm going to rotate about scene floor to make things easier. It will give the impression that there is a floor which I can rotate around. I highlight the back face and open a sketch. With the face selected, I use the Convert Entities tool. This converts every edge on that face to sketch geometry. I'll use the S key again and select my circle tool from the shortcut menu and draw a circle on. We'll dimension that circle and leave the dimension as is. Instant 2D allows me to change sketches more dynamically and faster than before. You'll notice that I can select the dimension, grab hold of the blue node and drag the dimension to suit. Again, I can snap to a ruler for precise measurements. Control 7 to switch to isometric. Again, using the contour select tool from the right mouse button menu, we'll select the top contour from that multi-contour sketch. And if we drag the contour 
into the solid body, it will produce a cut for us. I'll select the sketch and hide it from the context menu. Use the Q key to show my standard planes and open a new sketch and Ctrl 8 to orientate normal too. It's possible to use open contours when sketching. To cut this model, I'm just going to draw a line from the vertex to the edge and dimension it using the S key to select my dimension tool. S key to select exit sketch and S key again to select extruded cut. I can get access to my cut extrude options from the right mouse button menu rather than having to go to the property manager. Here I'll set it to through all in both directions. At this point the cursor icon changes to a mouse button where the right mouse button shows the tick. I can confirm the feature by right clicking. I'll rotate the model around and open up a sketch on the back face using the context menu. With the face selected I'll launch the Offset Entities command from the shortcut toolbar. The dimension is already highlighted for me within the property manager, meaning I can just type in the value that I want to offset by. We'll set that to three millimeters. The offset is currently going to the outside of the face. I want it inside. Rather than changing it in the property manager, I can just move my cursor to inside the face. The yellow arrow will change direction. And if I click, it will place the offset entities to the inside. I'll then take the sketch and I can either drag it as an extrude or if I drag it back into the body, it will produce a cut for me. I'll again snap to the ruler to define my depth. I'll open up a sketch on the front face from the context toolbar and from the shortcut menu, we'll select the slot tool. You'll notice that some of the sketching tools have the ability to add dimensions as you're sketching them. And with the slot, we can dimension center to center or outside to outside of arc. I'll select outside to outside. Shortcut bar to select my dimension tool and I'll dimension it 30 millimeters down from the top boss. A nice way to center this slot is to select the center point, press the Q key, select our front plane, make them coincident with each other. Instant 2D allows me to change those dimensions of the slot with a single click rather than multiple clicks. Again, we'll use Instant 3D to take the slot sketch and drag it, snap into the ruler. Again, on the front face, I'm gonna open up a sketch and convert some edges. This will create sketch geometry on my sketch plane based on the positions of those edges. As I orient normal to the front face, it's very difficult for me to see my sketch geometry that I've created. In order to see it better, I can use the shift key to hide the body. I'll then modify my sketch using the trim tool. If you hold the shift button while you're using power trim, it will extend the line to the nearest surrounding sketch geometry. On the right mouse button menu, we have the options keep trimmed entities as construction geometry and ignore trimming of construction geometry. They also appear in the property manager. Keeping trimmed entities as construction geometry can be useful, especially when trimming the geometry normally would break sketch relations. And with ignore trimming construction geometry, you can see that I can run my cursor through the construction geometry and it's ignored. If I trim something by accident, I can hover over the previous red dot to undo that trim. D key to exit my sketch. I can use shift tab to make the body visible again. I'll use instant 3D to drag my sketch. If I want to achieve an up to face end condition, I can use the alt key as I'm dragging it. Hover over my face and release. If we look at the feature, the up to surface end condition has been generated. We'll open another sketch on the front face. And this time we want to select a series of edges. We can do this from the right click menu by right clicking one of the edges and using the select tangency. Take those edges and convert them to sketch geometry using convert entities. We can right click on the previous sketch entity that was generated and use select chain. This will select all connected sketch entities. And from here, I'll use the offset entities command to offset them. I'll hover my cursor inside the edges to change the direction of the offset. I'll drag the sketch entities up and I'll create a three point arc intentionally not making it tangent with the previous line. To create a tangent relation, 
we can select the two entities that we want to create the relationship between, or maybe quicker, you can just select the common vertex between them. The tangent option will appear. Also when creating arcs, we can do this directly from the line tool. We can use the A key as we're sketching to toggle from a line to a tangent arc, or we can just hover over the previous endpoint. The tangency is automatically created. Window selecting right to left ensures that any entities touching the window will be selected. From here, I'll release the cursor and from the context menu, make them equal. I'll select the two points holding control, release control and make those points horizontal. I'll then turn on the new preview sketch dimension option, click on the arc to show the dimension, click the dimension and type in my value. Then add a dimension between the origin and the arc. This dimension can solve in a variety of different orientations. If I want to lock it in a particular orientation, I can use the right click menu and then as you can see I can move my cursor anywhere. D key to exit sketch and then control 7 to orientate to isometric view. I'll then launch the cut extrude tool from my shortcut toolbar. From the right mouse button menu I'll set my end condition to offset from surface. Rather than rotating the model around to select the surface that I want to offset I can right click and use the select other command to allow me to select through the faces of the model. I'll turn direction two off from the right mouse button menu and then move across to my property manager. Rather than having the cut extrude start on the face that I sketched it on, I'm going to build in an offset of three millimeters. I'll modify the offset from surface dimension to three millimeters also. Clicking the face of the feature reveals the dimensions. Here I want the two offset commands to always be the same. To do this, I can right click on one of my offset dimensions and select the link values option. Within here, I type a name for the dimension, then select the other dimension, select link values, and from the drop down, choose the offset dimension that I just created. You'll see when I modify these dimensions with instant 3D, I can modify one and it updates automatically the other one to be the same value. From our shortcut menu, we'll launch the whole wizard tool. We'll place a tap tool on this surface. If we hover over the edge of the arc, it will reveal the crosshairs and we can drop the hole on the center point. Next, we want a series of holes that are all on the same axis. Rather than create these holes individually, we can use the advanced hole tool to generate this. We'll resize our initial counter ball and click on the face to show a preview. From the flyout menu, we can insert elements above or below the active element. And the hole types can be counter ball, counter sink, tapped or standard holes. We'll choose hole and again, size that appropriately. We can also incorporate a far side hole. This requires us to select an additional face. We'll select the opposite end face of the boss using the select other tool. Once you've created your advanced hole, it can be saved away as a favorite and recalled at any point. As you can see here, I have some favorites saved away that I can select from. I'll choose my top option. Then switch to the positions tab and position our hold on the origin. It is possible for us to take faces of the model and make them transparent by right clicking the face and selecting change transparency. This will allow us to see the internals of our model. Q key to show my standard planes. I'll select the right plane and open a sketch. I'll use my shortcut toolbar to select my line tool and sketch a triangle. I'll add in some dimensions. And a parallel relationship. I'll use the S key again to launch the sketch fillet tool. And within the sketch fillet tool, there is an option to dimension each fillet. I'll drag a window around my sketch 
and you can see from the preview that every vertex within that sketch is filleted. Because I turned on dimension each fillet, I have the ability to modify each filleted sketch entity individually. I'll use Instant 2D to drag those to the correct size. Where we've set transparency, it can be very difficult to select the transparent face again. If you need to select the transparent face, just hold the shift key while you're selecting. This will allow the transparent face to be selected and we can turn off the transparency options. We'll select the sketch and from the shortcut menu, choose the extruded cut command. From the right mouse button menu, I'll set my end conditions and reverse direction and build an offset to offset the cut from my sketch plane by two millimeters. D key to complete feature. I'll pre-select the feature from my feature tree and launch a shortcut menu. The mirror command I want to use doesn't appear on this menu, so I can use the search tool to find the mirror tool. From my search results, I can actually drag the mirror command directly onto the shortcut toolbar, so it's there in future. However, I can go to the customize menu. Within here, it's possible to drag flyout toolbars onto our shortcut menus. I'm gonna select the pattern flyout menu. You can see when I access this pattern menu, there's not only the mirror commands, but various other patterning commands available. I'll select the mirror command and use the Q key to show my right plane, which I'll then select as my mirror plane. Next, we'll add some fillets. I'll launch the fillet tool from the shortcut menu. I'll run some five mil fillets along these edges. D key to complete the feature. I'll launch the fillet tool again and run some additional 3 mil fillets along these edges. If I want to change just one of the fillet sizes of one of the edges, I can do that by launching the fillet expert tool within the fillet command. Select the change tab, select the fillet that you want to resize, type in the new size for that fillet and click resize. As you can see from the tree, a new fillet has been added. So it's taken that original fillet feature and broke it down into two separate features. We'll launch the fillet tool again and do some smaller fillets. I'll select the edges that I want the fillets to run along. Another way to change the value of a fillet within the same fillet command is to toggle on multiple radius fillet. Every selection you have made is presented with a flyout next to it with the fillet value inside. Just modify the value of the fillet that you want to change. D key to exit. This part is going into a much bigger assembly, so it makes sense for us to have a simplified version of it. We can create simplified versions directly within SolidWorks using the simplify command. I'll just launch it from the shortcut menu. This launches the simplify dialog down the right hand side within the task pane. From within here, I can find features that represent a size or volume of the model. I'll click find now and it finds a number of features, including fillets and cut extrudes. I can then choose to suppress those features and also create a derived configuration. Click on suppress, close the dialog box and we'll look at our configuration manager. You'll see within here, there is an additional derived configuration created. So we're ready to use that derived configuration within our much bigger top level assembly.